Hi, Facebook followers. This is Kim, SIInstability.com. How are you doing today? I haven't posted in a while. I've been a little busy and been getting ready for this last surgery that I've just had three days ago. I haven't even posted about doing the surgery until I wanted to get here and have it done. So now I'm three days post-op, so I'm here to discuss it and hope everybody is doing well. That follows my Facebook page, SIInstability.com and or my YouTube channel. AG Health. I wanted to share about having a surgery three days ago. And well, first, let's, let me give a little history to those that may not be knowing my past. Okay, on March 31st of 2019, I had a skiing accident, not from falling down, but a hyperextension of my left knee while I was skiing. And it had an audible pop, and then my knee twisted, and then I actually laid myself down on the ski hill and got off the ski hill by the nice. Uh, ski patrol and their toboggan ride off the hill. So I did, very, I was very proactive, got an MRI right away, got things, got things done, and I knew right away 10 days after the injury that I had an ACL tear. It was, it was, it was known as grade two partial proximal tear of the femoral attachment. And so I studied and researched all that and I knew, hmm, when my body gets injured, I, I probably really could need surgery, but I gave it my best shot conservatively, meaning I had immediate prolotherapy into my LCL, my MCL of the external ligaments. I had my knee drained 10 days after injury. I had ozone, et cetera, put into the knee. I did, you know, like a break fusion bracing, ACL functional bracing on my knee. And then, because at that time, I had already a prior elbow surgery scheduled at the end of April like 30 days after this knee yeah. injury. So I went ahead with that. But in the meantime, I had to try to find some surgeons to help me. And I would have postponed the elbow surgery if that's what God had wanted. Well, I will not mention names, but I did try to contact two surgeons' offices in, in Seattle area, and they both poo-pooed the idea of direct ACL repair, saying, it, well, it doesn't happen, or there's no good results, or just either blew it off or didn't say they didn't do it or didn't know anybody in that area that did it. I said, okay, fine. I wasn't in agreement to do any full ACL reconstruction. I'd rather wait and see. So I went ahead with my elbow surgery. And after I healed, a month after that, I then went and had some stem cells done to my left knee um, with Dr. Silva at Interventional Orthopedics of Bellevue. That was done May 28th of last year. So he hit up my LCL, my MCL, the AL lig ligaments, and then he went in with dye and fluoroscopic guidance, and he hit up the proximal tear of my ACL with my BMC bone marrow concentrate. He hit that up real good. Of course, it was it was, it was like I had surgery. I was just it was painful and swollen, but I was able to hobble out of there. Some people have gone out of regenerative injections and wheelchairs, but I got out of there okay. I, I kept my bracing up all the way through July, so almost three and a half months of bracing. And finally, I felt that I was strong enough to stop the bracing, and I continued on with physical therapy from then till the present time. And I was going to the gym, and as I got stronger, I just used smaller little braces on my knee. I was actually able to get on an elliptical the first time in my life last summer. Things did very, very, very well. But as time went on, I had a second MRI December of 2018. It still showed the tear, some granulation filling in, but more health to the LCL and MCL. So things did heal, especially on the external side. And it kept saying I had a medial horizontal tear. Well, I did feel a little laxity in the medial side of my capsule. So I decided in January to continue to pursue in finding a surgeon that I could see eye to eye with. And that led me to Dr. Gregory D. Felice in New York City. I saw him on February 7th because he's probably the most published author on the subject of ACL direct repair. And so I flew there to see him and he said based on the two MRIs I presented and in his clinical experience, that I was a good candidate for that surgery, but the only guarantee that they could give me was what was the quality of the health of my ACL inside until they could see it with an arthroscopic camera. Is the ACL fibers still good and strong intact? Have they shriveled back? What's the status? Will they hold a stitch when it's put in there or will they crumble? I mean, so that was the unknown factor. But then this old COVID virus decides to come along, so any plans to go to New York came to a screeching halt. I was originally scheduled for April 27th for surgery. Well, that didn't happen. So about 
in May, about four weeks ago, I literally, through prayer, because I was really praying and grieving over the status of our country, over the status of the COVID, just a lot of times of prayer. Um, one particular day, I was actually with my lovely daughter, Allie, um, in Boise. At that time, I'd sold my horse, and I was just sitting in the house by myself, and I just prayed, and I just felt the strong urgency to contact New York and just check in with the secretary to the doctor and ask what's happening, you know, any hope to get to New York or what. And I asked her to ask the doctor to please find me somebody out west that could do what he did or knew what he did or trained under him something, somebody. Well, the good news is, praise God, an hour later I get the call back from the secretary who says, Kim, Dr. DeFelice would like to speak with you. So he gets on the phone with me says, Kim, I just got off the phone with this Dr. Timothy Crawl at Mammoth Lakes Orthopedics in California that can do this surgery for you and he, he I've, I've, I've advocated for you, I've given him the information I have on you and he's willing to take your case. And I, so I said, okay, thank you Dr. Felice, I'll follow up with whatever you're suggesting. So I did that, immediately followed up, then I had sent them my direct MRI images so they could see them, and within a week I had a teleconference appointment with Dr. Kral, very wonderful doctor, and then we planned a surgery, and I flew down here, and I'm, it's about three hours from Reno, I'm in Mammoth Lakes, California, and because it is essential surgery, because of the instability in my knee, everything was able to be approved and go forward even though they're still in like stage two of their reopening plan here in California. And um, I came in the office on Monday, and this is now Saturday as I'm making this video, and he did a complete examination of my knee, did ultrasound, very thorough exam. I, I'm very pleased. I Not every orthopedic doctor impresses me, but this doctor actually used ultrasound. And when doctors use ultrasound, besides just trying to read an MRI, want to see your joint in live motion, I think that's an excellent skill, an excellent tool that patients need to have done to, to look at dynamic instability or what's happening. Well, he put my knee through various stress tests and he could see that my medial meniscus had some mild extrusion, which is indicative of the capsular ligaments, like the coronary ligaments, or maybe specifically the name meniscotibial ligaments. They're the smaller ligaments that lie close to the capsule underneath the main ligament, MCL, which was fine. So he evaluated all that and said yes he'd fix that also so now we here we're on saturday and surgery was on wednesday three days ago and i'm here to tell everybody that i've done great i mean i i i've done great um the only hard part is sitting around more with my leg up but as far as the rest of me i only have taken like 10 milligrams of a flexorol at night you know starting in the hospital at night with uh, 13 milligrams of Tylenol, maybe twice a day, and just elevation and micing, and then I had PT, one PT before I left the hospital, and then I had a PT yesterday, and she actually massaged a leg. It's doing really great. Um, so I'm actually gonna try to turn the camera around here, doing this Facebook Live, see if that works. Okay, here's my knee. So the heavy ace wrap was taken off, and. I'm sorry if the focus is a little, my lighting in here is not that good, but um, I only have a little bit of swelling really right here. I mean, you can kind of compare to, oh, to my other knee. Sorry it's a little bit blurry because I'm not doing high definition. Um, it's just, yeah, it's just a little swollen there. She she took off the, the surgical dressings and put on steri strips and then just rewrapped the area with some sterile cotton gauze after they took off the big stuff. You know, I have full full movement of my leg. I'm actually sitting here in a stretched position. I'm like actually pushing my knee down, but but I can I can um I can lift my leg. You know, I've got my quad my quadricep is actually, you know, firing. That's one of their biggest concerns. It's just got a little like I said, it's just right around here. It's just got a little bit of swelling right here. Not too bad. You can see my other knee, so I would say in this area, in this area, compared, it's it's got some swelling here. Um, now, I've had my leg, see, one of the key things is he wants you to keep your leg straight, you know, because he's also, it's the lateral meniscus that he actually repaired. So, my lateral meniscus had a tear in it that was not on the MRI, and my medial meniscus that said it had a tear um, did not have a tear. So, you can't... <laughs> 
you can't always trust MRIs. My experience has taught me a lot about those things, you know. You can't see everything, and they're not all knowing. But when you're in there with an arthroscopic camera, you can see everything. And the, and the point is, my knee is very healthy, and there's no arthritis in my knee. The meniscus quality of each of the meniscus is very healthy. It, it is, there's no degenerative tears. This was an acute type of tear from the accident. Anyhow, um, so, you know, I do all my, you know, I do all my, my leg things. And then I've been laying here. It's, it's, now I, I'm going to try to bend it. it. It is a little stiff because I've been holding it straight. But, you know, I already have 60 degrees of bend. And if I just, and if I just rub this just a little bit, I can bend more. No. I mean, the PT yesterday said I have 60 to 70 degrees of bend already, and I'm only allowed to go up to 90 degrees for the first six weeks. Because with um, posterior portions of your meniscuses, you can load them a little bit while your leg is straight. But if you have them in a bent position, that's not best to load a knee in a bent position. So the bending is all done like if I'm on a bed, you know, like I bend it while I'm on the bed. But when I'm standing up, I the knee is more locked straight. And I'm only supposed, to, and I'm only allowed to have um, toe touch weight bearing, mainly because not because of the ACL repair. It's because of right. I am so sorry. This is a little bit blurry, but right in here, right in here, the medial capsule. He plicated that, so he's more concerned about the capsular plication than the um, than the ACL direct repair. If 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 he only did the ACL direct repair you would allow to have more weight bearing right away on the knee, lock straight and do your PT, and you wouldn't have to do the non-weight bearing. But because of the capsular repair, that's what's holding back the weight bearing at this point in time. Um, but anyhow, let me turn the camera back around. Voila, voila. Anyhow, thank you for everybody that's watching and that supports my, my, my Facebook page. I just, I'm here to help other patients, help them to you know, not be afraid of surgery. Surgeries can be beneficial in the right cases, in the right situations, but it takes a dedication to PT uh, follow-up, good hard work, knowing what you're doing, and um, just working hard at it and advocating for yourself. Um, could I have lived without this surgery? I probably could have, but the instability for me in the long run, would not be good for my healthy knee. Now, people say, well, you're going to get arthritis because you went in there and had a surgery. I say that's bullpucky because you know what? I've had surgeries in a lot of joints, ankles, um, my other knee, elbows, and I don't have any arthritis come on my body because I had a surgery in a joint because I've always done regen injections, and most of all, I, I do a very low-sugar diet. I'm basically keto carnivore. I do not eat carbs. Carbs are your inflammatory problem. So I have to tell all of my followers out there that it's not, your health is not just, you know, I do these orthopedic things and all that, but your health has to be lower carbs because carbs, whether it's sugar, pasta, grains, uh, excessive amounts of fruit, and all those kind of things, it just, it doesn't help the human body. We need to be more in a state of ketosis and burning our fat in our body and not be living as sugar burners. So I have to give that caveat. You know, I don't want any patient to think that I, you know, that, you know, well, I have to be honest. I have to say, this is how I heal, or this is how I know is a part of my healing is I take buku box, boxes of supplementation. I get Zyto computer scans monthly. I have my own Zyto computer scan. I scan myself. I know exactly what my body is asking me to take and I take those supplements for that day and my closest friend is a board certified naturopathic doctor Dr. Kim Fiucci at um, Herbal Wellness Incorporated in Ohio and so and also my niece is a PhD in um, complementary alternative health and Christian counseling so I have family members and close friends that are you know board certified natural type of doctors so I follow those type of regimes and then I do have a very wonderful doctor Dr. Lanou who is my primary osteopathic regenerative doctor in Spokane that also follows very healthy regimes and highly endorses me and, 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 and believes in what I do because he does it himself. He eats keto, low carb, and he does regenerative injections. And I've done vitamin C drips. I've done three vitamin C drips over the last three months. There's no way that dang COVID virus was going to get on me. 
Um, I kept my immune system built. I take supplements from my immune system. And yes, I've had to have the COVID test and I've tested negative twice because you can't have a surgery unless you have a COVID test. So I do all that. I just want everybody to be aware. It takes a lot to go into healing. God's in the healing process. God can heal our human bodies. But sometimes things just need a little surgical intervention, like a little fix, a little nip and tuck, a little suture here or there, and then hit that body with regenerative to further your healing down the road. And that's what I intend to do. I have every intention down the road to, if I need to, to hit, hit the surgical uh, sites with future regenerative stuff. And even this particular surgeon I'm working with, he believes in regenerative also. I just don't need it right this moment because he created bleeding, blo bleeding bone inside my knee when he put the bio, bio swivel lock anchors to anchor the, um, ACL in there actually goes into the bone, so that creates the bleeding, which releases like natural stem cells, so that flows through my knee, and those natural release of those those that ingredients of my human body helps then to trigger the healing for the meniscal repair and or the meniscal repair. So there you have it. Thanks for watching, and I'll update as as we go along yes it's a sacrifice to be sitting here in the bed and I can't be out walking because walking is one of my favorite things I like to do so for all those other people in chronic pain or sitting around I, I hear you I have a heart for you I have a heart for all my other fellow patients that have contacted me or follow me through this Facebook page I just have a heart for you and just wish you all the best and and God grant each and every one of you wisdom from above to help for your situations and thanks again for watching, and we'll post again here in the future. Bye-bye. Mm,